okay guys so now we are going to start in this video regarding active directory domain services overview administration of our windows domain controllers and what are the administrative activities we have to work on that we may look on the overview of azure ready if we get time and then some group policy implementation as well as active directory certificate services in the last video we discussed about active directory certificate services installation but not about the conceptual things related to active directory certificate services so just let's just start with this first uh, with the active directory domain services or adds so adds we are talking about when active directory domain services or adds it's basically a central store if we talk about a specific to Active Directory domain services, it's a database or it's a central store that manage all the domain objects such as user accounts, computer accounts, groups. Also, it provides you a searchable as well as hierarchical structure of your objects in an organized way. So with the help of Active Directory, you can centrally manage entire infrastructure in terms of user accounts or groups or computer accounts or you can say computers, your servers, you can manage through a centralized environment. Okay, so when you're talking about Active Directory, it's basically a two component or you can say it's a divided in two major components. First one are the logical components and the second one is physical component. So the logical components are our partition schema, domains, domain tree, forest, sites, OUs, organizational units and the containers. So uh, when we are talking about the partition of Active Directory, so Active Directory partitions basically as they exist in the logical identity for our Active Directory database. The Active Directory default database is named as ntds.dit. I think we have seen that in the last video when we are installing Active Directory domain service. It's asked for the database path and where we have seen that ntds.dit. The file name was mentioned. You can also view it in my last video. First part of this 2019. So uh, in that we have a logical some logical partitions that uh, named as like configuration partition, domain partitions. Uh, we will discuss this in detail further. So uh, these are the logical partition that is a part of logical component. Active Directory Schema. Schema is a set of definitions or attributes for a specific type of object. For example, a user, user account properties or you can say user account attributes like username, first name, last name, password. So these are defined on the basis of schema. Domain is your logical identity or the logical administrative boundary where the all users and the computer accounts exist. We may have a domain tree structure also that is a form of hierarchical association of domain in the single forest and could be as a child and the parent relationship form also. We'll discuss this in more detail on this part once we talk about the child domain and their section. And forest is your outmost boundary that share a single root information. Like for the single root domain, we have an entire forest where all the domains having a two-way trusted relationship or as well as the uh, integration of each other for the resource sharing or uh, credentials accessibility. Then we have an uh, sites and organization units and the, some containers. So basically organization units simplifies your group policy implementations as well as your uh, easy to manage environment infrastructure with the help of some specific type of permissions, some specific type of configuration settings. We will discuss this in more detail. It's just like as a folder, you're organizing your files in your folders. The same way 
the organizational unit simplifies your administrative day-to-day -day activities in Active Directory. Containers also exist uh, in Active Directory, just similar as o OUs, where you can apply the group policy settings. We will discuss this more detail once we go in the group policy detail section. So, how it work. And sites are the location where you are going to place your domain controllers. So, it will also define some routes, uh, replication paths and everything. So, it will also simplify a distribution of your domain controllers. And what are the domain controllers? Because this word comes since first video back to back so the domain controller is something it's a physical server where your active directory database copies reside or active directory database exist it's just like a server once you built this server as a domain controller it will hold the copy of your active directory database then further to that it will replicate uh, the same copy with all other domain controllers how it the replication will go we'll discuss this in detail and later on and the same as the data stores that is your ntds.dit file the default path for this is windows directory windows ntds folder would be the default path for your data store or your active directory of uh, windows Active Direct uh, Windows Active Directory Database. Global Catalog Server. Basically, a global catalog server. If you have a more than one domain controllers in your domain, and you have a multiple domains, one is the child domain and the one is the parent domain. In that scenario, the global catalog rule comes in picture. So it will contain the local server domain entire detail information as well as the partial information of your other forest domain so that will simplify your searching of objects authentication and all those activities or help in this so if you have a multiple domains in your domain environment or your forest environment then the global catalog server will come in picture so that will contain the information about the entire things about the local domain as well as other child and associated domains Okay, then in, we have a RODC role also available. Uh, it's a read-only domain controller. So if you want to put a copy of your domain controller for authentication or basic purpose at any branch office or somewhere where you think would be security would be a uh, challenge or security would, a threat would be exist. So you can put in a read-only copy in that domain. So it won't impact your environment due to security incident but it will keep the copy of running your domain uh, read only or already cbs copy okay let's continue on this and uh, we can see what else come okay so the active directory objects when we are talking about active directory there are type of some objects exist the objects comes as in form of user objects like the user accounts some groups the group also distributed in the various types like security as well as the distribution group and group are divided in two sections or you can say a group types and a scope so the group type would represent security or as a distribution so distribution groups are mainly used for email distributions like in exchange or microsoft exchange or any other software if it's integrated then you can use distribution group to send emails and the security groups are used to specify a permissions to any object could be a folder could be a computer or any kind of permissions and there are the three scopes so scopes define the boundary where the groups can work it could be a local domain local global or universal local groups are specific to a limited with a single server or a single client machine if this you the account is the domain local then the scope boundary would be domain only that means you can specify a permissions you can specify things only limited to a specific domain 
it's not beyond that if it is in global group then your boundaries are extended and uh, you can specify your domains as well as your associated uh, domains like uh, child domains or any other domains where it's the availability would be there you can assign a per assign a permissions anywhere in the forest if it is a global one and universal if you put choose the type of universal then it's same as like you can assign the permissions to forest as well as some additional abilities you can anywhere in across the forest also so let me just quickly show you uh, Uh, group distribution before going to proceed on this more let me have a look on this quickly okay just going to my domain controller okay, it's unlocked in state so let me quickly unlock it okay so we have deployed this active directory in the last one so I'm just going to do some simplified. I'm just going to create my organizational unit. Okay, I'm just going to create. Click on new. Right click, then click on new. Then you can see the organizational unit is there. Protect this container for accidental deletion. Yes, it should not be deleted accidentally. I'm going to create a unit for the sales business. Okay or let me prod first create it for the prod as no it's prod and then in the prod i am just going to create one more organizational unit named as sales okay in the sales i am going to create two units one is users so these are the standard ways when you are deploying it in a production environment so product prod sales and then sales division we have a user as well as i'm going to create one more as a sorry i have taken it uh, computer so i'm just going to create organizational unit named as users and computers so i've created a two one two two units one is users, uh, take it to user instead of that, rename it to users. Okay, so there is a hierarchical structure, sales, here computer, and uh, you can see the users. So I'm just going to create a one more user account here. It's sales user one. Okay. it's done from here so what we have done that we have created to use one group user and now uh, we are going to create one more group here so for the groups I am taking another one the name dash groups okay I'm going to create one more group here so when I'm going to create a group you can see the options are available what would be the scope it could be a domain local global or a universal so in this universal it's visible to entire forest it's for the domain and the trusted domain scope is still for the entire forest and domain local is limited to your local group or local domain level same as security and the distribution so i'm taking it as a sales leader I'm going to create a global group with the security permissions now there would be two ways you can add the users in a group first one is you can open the 
group and then go to members click on add search the user account like uh, which you wanted to add it here click on advanced just click on here sales user one which I have created okay let me find now you can click it and then you can simply add it from here click apply it will get added I have not added this time you can see I have not added this time now if you go in the users right click on the user simply add to group or go to users properties in the group box that like member of click on member of and then from here you can also search sales leader is there any sales leader group yes it would be added once you click enter or click ok it will add it here this one click apply click ok now this user will be a member of the sales group group is used when suppose you have to assign some permissions so the administration would be easy for example if I'm going to create a simple folder here I've created a share folder here okay so in this share folder if I'm going to set some permissions okay I have enabled the sharing let me quickly enable it so go to share and I'm going to enable the sharing now when I'm going to set the permissions you can see that everyone is there no issue I would like to add this is a sales group here so you can see instead of assigning permissions to individual it's always recommend you should assign permission to groups now this group has a full access control on this folder as per permission which I have placed on this folder now if I want to add permission to someone on this folder you can simply add it from this group and if you like to remove the permission you can remove it from here instead of assigning permission to individual objects it will be more convenient if you have to assign the permissions on the multiple locations or multiple things similarly if we have a three folders I can assign the permission on all these three folder to this group and further this group will distribute permission to users so it will simplify our administration okay now going back with our section so this is all about the groups now we have an active directory forest and the domain it's an security boundary and the replication boundary like the objects can be replicated within forests itself between domains child domains or a tree domains these are the relationships you can create between domains parent or child tree root external real m forest and shortcuts so these are the external trust are basically when you can create uh, you have an different complete structure domain could be a merging of two organizations or a close relationship with uh, two domains tree root would be a internal one and the parent and child is also internal one forest to forest trust is also created like between two forests you can create the uh, trust as well as shortcut and the real m so in the real m trusting we have an option we can integrate with uh, other directory services that is not a part of windows directory or where it is not supported somewhere like the windows active directory which is not supported then you can use the uh, act, uh, authentication sorry you can use the real m trust in that scenario mostly it's in non-active directory cases and uh, the forest based trust you can create or shortcuts you can create with any other active directory itself only domain as we discussed the domain is your replication boundary sorry not replication boundary and it's an administrative boundary section for your domain same as uh, the trust relationship that you can create any type of trust between uh, these types uh, with 
one domain to other domain or one environment to another environment of Active Directory. We can simply have a look on this, how we can create a trust on this. So let me quickly go to this. Okay, now I'm just going back on this and let me show you how can we create trust in Active Directory. Click on this tools. I will show you in upcoming videos when we have a multiple domain. I will build uh, another domain environment and show you the domain trusting implementation. But from here, you can go to properties, sorry, uh, domains and trust right. Just click on this domain. And from here, you can create a trust. New trust, select another domain where you would like to create trust and put the name and do that I can I will show you in upcoming videos how we can create an Active Directory trust okay now just going back with a couple of things which uh, I think we were discussing okay now coming to OUs as I uh, shown you in previous uh, couple of practicals Base section where we have seen the OUs basically used to manage your objects and further you can impl implement group policies on that so I will show you how can we set up the group policies and GPO policy will help you for simplify your administrative work active directory replication replication as I told you like we have a multiple domain controllers like the physical structure in your active directory in that scenario you have to manage your replication part also like the data should be synchronized with all the domain controller in the same one as we mentioned in initial stage the active directory or ADDS is a centralized management store so we need to assure that the data should be synchronized in all the servers so this will be uh, handled in the active directory replication section and you need not to worry about that because AD itself capable enough to handle this replication. Still, we have a couple of things that we have to identify. When we are talking about Active Directory replication, before that, I'm just going to give you a brief intro about the Active Directory sign-in process. Like when a client try to log in with the help of Active Directory credentials at server, how it will proceed. So when user send an authentication request, it sent back to domain controller. Then TGT is ticket renting ticket services is back to client. And then it will apply an authentication uh, process like the username and the password that has been authenticated at the local system. The password and the username that exist on your domain controller, it's sent back to client. Local workstation identifies OK. The XYZ user is authorized to log in on this machine and then user is able to access this. Make sure they would serve us or a client, a member server or a client must be a part of your domain. If you are trying to use the domain authentication because first the client or member server get authenticated and then user account get authenticated on the server. This is the domain controller. We have uh, used this term a lot. So just a couple of descriptions or a couple of details related to domain controller. Domain controller is something which is basically hosting our NTDS.DIT and the syswall. Syswall folder contains your group policy objects and their information like centralized policies and uh, ADDS directory database is ntds.dit file so these two things exist on your domain controller it's basically host your Kerberos authentication and uh, KDCs like uh, authentication services hosting provider you can say if you want to keep your server highly available at least you must have two domain controllers in your domain to maintain your high availability if one of the server get down then obviously the other can serve request 
the global catalog we have initially discussed this so global catalog basically host a partial attribute set for all other domains in your forest as well as entire detail of your local domain so if you have a single domain obviously global catalog will contain all the information but if you have a multiple domains then the global catalog server is a key role player because it contains other domains information also it's also a type of domain controller nothing else it's similar as the domain controller but having a some additional specialities uh, when we are talking about active directory so as we said uh, we have a multiple activities multiple roles replication and all these stuff so to perform this entire environment centrally managed environment with multiple domain controllers like we have a multiple domain controller like uh, machines so to maintain this a synchronization replication and everything a couple of operational master roles are associated with your active directory these are the five fsmo roles so in these fsmo roles what it will do it will basically perform a particular set of activity for which they are designed to so operational master is responsible to manage the environment in a smooth and consistent way now we have a four uh, sorry now we have a five operational master roles or fsmo roles so in these uh, two are based on your forest level and three are based on your domain individual so if you have multiple domains obviously the domain individuals would be exist over there and the forest individual would be exist at the forest level the first one is domain naming master and the schema master these two are mainly based on forest level and rid infrastructure and the pdc emulator these three are for your domain specific you cannot directly view these roles uh, if you want to see uh, how uh, where it exists or FSMO roles, but couple of things you can perform it on operational master roles. The full form of FSMO is flexible single master operational role or FSMO role. The first two like domain naming master, domain naming master that allows you to add or remove domains in your forest. If it's unavailable, then you cannot add domains in your forest schema master role the second one it is responsible to extend your schema if uh, you are going to add any application for example uh, microsoft exchange or skype for business or syscom so these are the things where you have to add the attributes in your schema then schema master role is required and it's always operate at forest level make sure if you are going to make changes then you should be a member of a schema master admin or enterprise admin group then you can do that if it's unavailable you cannot make changes in your schema other three are the domain level uh, fsmo roles the first one is your domain rid master that basically once you act active directory uh, trying to create a new object like user account computer or anything so it will assign a unique identifier or a number that is called as SID and it's ensured that your two domain controllers should not assign the same SID to a single uh, object to make sure that it's the RID master always allocate a block of RIDs to each domain controller in your entire environment because if you are creating a user account attack server X domain controller at the similar time another user is trying to create an user account at Y domain controller so you so the unique identifier must be unique that's why it's a RID master role will comes in picture and it will assign a specific set of block, unique ID block to X domain controller as well as to Y domain controller. So whenever the domain controller is trying to create, uh, like any user is trying to create a object in your domain, then it will always 
use their RID block, create the object and sync to each other or the entire the environment. And if this role is not available, then obviously once the event uh, like, like the block set gets over, you will enable to create new objects. The next one is the infrastructure master. So this will infrastructure master basically handle the, and maintain the integrity of your all inter, entire infrastructure or references. So it will ensure that the uh, infrast, uh, your objects SIDs which are mapped with associated permissions, securities, everything should be integrated with each other. If it is not available or unavailable, then Global Catalog will not uh, check your group memberships and authentication issues would be available. Uh, would be, users would be getting an authenticated authentication issues for their specific objects. The last one is the PDC emulator. The PDC emulator is basically a time source as well as it will maintain the synchronization of all the domain controllers in your forest as well as in your domain as well as your forest so whenever like password gets changed anything is getting updated so it's the pdc's responsibility so it will replicate the changes to all other domain controllers if more than one domain controller exists if single domain controller obviously everything would be on the single one itself if you are, uh, if the PDC emulator role is unavailable or the server with hosting uh, PDC emulator role, so it's not available, then you have to, you cannot change the passwords, the replication won't be uh, getting replicated to all the servers and everything. So these are the roles that exist on a single domain controllers in your uh, forest environment or in your domain environment. And by default, when you are creating a first domain controller, it's always updated on your first one. Further to that, you can move these roles to independent domain controllers individually. So if one of the domain controller get failed, only one role would get impacted. Apart from that, as a security measure, it's always recommended. You must have a uh, recovery procedure available to procure these roles once again if the server get failed suppose the server is getting an uh, holding a role of rid master and it's get failed then it's your responsibility to recover role as an administrator in that scenario uh, you can use the backup etc to restore the server or if you don't have that then you have an option to seize your role of operational master and assign the same role to another server We will cover this in upcoming sections from if you are upgrading your active directory from your the previous version so in place upgrade is only possible with the last two versions that is windows server 2012 r2 or later version you require you first build the server associate the server in your environment and then you can move it to upgraded version i will let i will uh, show you in upcoming videos when we i will create a video on upgrade so these are the fsmo roles we are talking about earlier the five roles so you can transfer the role as a part of plant migration and uh, you can also seize the roles if you lost the server or server get crash like the domain controller that is hosting a role of a specific rid master so you can use that transfer or a seize approach as per your requirement if you are upgrading it from previous version to next version obviously you can uh, use a plan transfer for this ntds util.exe one of the utilities available with the help of this utility you can perform the administrative uh, activities let me quickly show you ntds uh, util
okay so now NTDS util is available with your commands you can simply type help let me quickly show you help so these are the commandlets that you can perform in your act through with your active directory restore here from this you can perform authoritative restore database couple of things are there so with the help of this you can uh, choose and seize your roles or transfer roles I will create a new video on this how can we seize the FSMO roles and how can we transfer the roles accordingly we will discuss this in more detail with the help of this utility okay now let's go back with a couple of more options the second one is the group policy or the GPOs so GPO is our one of the administrative control unit or a tool with the help of GPO objects, you can control the environment as per your convenience or as per your active directory administration. To implement these group policies, you can apply the desktop settings, manage applications, you can put network folders as a drive in user's computer, you can configure your network configuration settings, like a lot of things we can see. Uh, once we go in the lab section how we, uh, we can manage the group policies and that will provide you a administrative view in the entire environment let me quickly show you the group policy group policies are the four basic orders where you can apply the group policy the first one is the local group policy objects that you can apply it on your local machine and it always take a higher precedence so whenever you are going to apply a group policy always understand the thing how it will operate on your client computers so the client computer first your local group policies are getting applied second level your site level policies are getting applied then third level it will the domain level group policy and the last level OU level policies are getting applied so let me let me quickly go to my server and show you the group policy objects I am going on the tools menu group policy of management I just open that okay so this is you can see once you expand this you will get a view this is my domain here you can see the default domain policy is already applied uh, the group the OU which I have created nothing is applied over here because you can't see any group policy is associated here you can see the sites we don't have any site level policy at this moment till now these two options I will let you know what it will do modeling and this same as the starter GPO and uh, WMI filters I will let you know further currently in our environment we have a two default built-in policies one is the domain controller policy default one and the default domain policy you can see the default domain is applied domain controller is applied to domain controllers and the default domain is applied to entire domain apart from that if I'm just quickly going on one of the member server let me show you something okay so I'm going on a default uh, server okay local server I'm just going on my local machine okay so this is my local server it's not my domain controller it's a domain member server and simply you can just type gpedit.msc gpedit.msc or you can open a local security policy so this will what it will do gpedit.msc you can simply type it in your run box okay and click on ok the second option is that you can open your local security policies also so this is your local security policy the first the one which we talked about the first one so it will take a highest uh, precedence when you are going to apply it here I will show you how can we apply the group policy and the group policy settings let me quickly go back here so the first is local level then site level then domain level and then OU level policies are applied 
these are the two default ones which I have just shown you the default domain controller and the default domain policy then storage if you are talking about the group policy by default it's always stored in your sys wall folders and from there it's automatically getting replicated to all other environment A starter GPU option is also available. A starter GPU is something what you can define a set of settings that you ensure that like for everywhere you have to apply the same settings. So you have configure a set of uh, defined settings in the form of template. Save it in a starter one. So whenever you are going to create a new policy, it will automatically take those predefined settings which are in place as in a starter one so it will automatically apply those configurations and further to that whatever things you would like to add you can add it in your group policy default is once the syswall is your central store where all the files exist okay so let's quickly go back to our group policy section so we are going on this domain controller one and I'm going to create some you can see there's no computer I think I haven't placed any computer here in my sales uh, OU so what I'm going to do I'm going to move my client one to computer one okay it's asking about moving Click yes okay now my client one is moved you can also simply right click on that select move and then you can move it from here to that location also whatever things it's, it's up to you or you can simply drag it to here because I'm going to put the policies on this sales computer OU so here you can see the same structure is available in your group policy management console once you open it just click on right computer create a group policy in this domain and link it here so I'm just going to create okay let me quickly show you one thing you can see here only two group policies are there okay now I'm just going to create a new group policy so here I'm just going to put name as sales computer computers default whatever name it's up to you what you want to put it over there or whatever the name you like to place it we don't have any starter GPU otherwise we can use the starter GPU so it will take the predefined configuration and inherit the same okay now you can see the group policy is applied over here this one okay so this is applied over here we haven't done anything in this we have not set anything on this section from directory users and computer you can't see that but from group policy management you can see it here so I have applied that policy now I'm just right click on this and click on edit once you click on edit you will see the group policy management editor will be open for group policy management now lot of settings would be available there are two types of settings one is computer configuration and the one is user configuration preferences is something what you can specify a preference but you are not enforcing to do that but if you are applying in the group policy then it's something what you are enforced to do the same okay so now I'm going to do something uh, what I'm going to do I'm going to put some object restrictions uh, let me quickly go to desktop okay quickly desktop for the user setting probit changes enable active desktop disable icon allow bitmap wallpaper so the things what you like to change like in the network connections in the offline so here you can see you have to discover it by yourself once you go and open the things you will come to know what settings you can apply it from here like start menu you can see that there's a lot of option add search internet link history remove the people bar from the taskbar so these are the options once you enable or disable it even you can just click on any of the setting it will show you what it will do 
where it can be applicable and supported where it is so these are the settings that you can discover it and that you have to explore it by your own way once you apply this policy now what else you have to do at your client end you have setting once you decide the setting you can see it will you can generate a report here and from this report you can quickly see whatever the settings you have applied for example i am just going to change a couple of settings okay i am going to set uh, some computer configuration with the security settings go to local policies user right assignments okay allow logon locally allow remote desktop okay let me quickly change the audit settings okay allow logon audit define this policy success and the failure audits okay management i have defined couple of settings in this okay so i have done few of the settings here now you can see still it's the older one so let me quickly refresh this page okay now you can see the things which i had placed these are the setting which i applied on this in the computer configuration sections so these are the things which are applied with the help of server side now this is the what we have done at the server side or us group policy management console now how we can ensure and troubleshoot this policy is applied at client level or not so what we need to do and we have to just log in on the computer by default the policies are getting applied when the machine or your server is restarted or you have to play one of the command so let me quickly show you just uh, trying to open the uh, computer so we can have a look on this okay so when you apply the policies on the server side right after applying that you have an another part that is that comes under as a troubleshooting related to client side so you can see it one of the client is available here so the commands that you need to play at com client side you may have to always remember these so i'm just opening it as a run as with administrator to make sure that we have an admin privilege to validate as well as apply settings even some settings are available to apply at to client level itself only so the couple of things that you may have to validate the first one is gp update slash force this command is used to enforcely or firstly apply the group policy at machine so this command you have to always remember gp update slash force this is one of the command and you will get an confirmation message the policies are getting applied and the second one command is okay now the second command is okay you can see the command is successfully completed and user policies are successfully applied over here to view this you have another command that is gp result slash r you can just put is like this so once you play this command you can see it will show you the applied group policy objects on your machine so you can see both policy the default domain is applied and the sales one is applied both are the computer settings are applied from this for the user settings we haven't applied till now any policy that's why we can't see it here but uh, for computer setting we have placed this so two commands the one is group pol gp update slash force another one is gp result slash r for the troubleshooting purpose at client level and the third one you have to remember the command as that is rs 
rsop.msc. So once you run this rsop.msc, you will get a resultant set of policies. Type rsop.msc and enter it. You will get a resultant set of policies. With the help of this, you can view the current applied settings at your machine. You can expand it and view it. Uh, the settings that are coming from group policy, you can view it from here. So it's just as a read-only view of your applied policy through server. So please make sure you must have these commands ready with you. These three commands, the gp update slash force, gp result slash r, and rsop.msc. I will create another video in detail to how can we apply a set of group policy and specific to group policies in upcoming section. Okay, so let's move on to a little bit from group policy to Active Directory certificate services. We have applied the configuration things like we have created a group policy certificate services, install that role at initial installation time because we have to add clients and the member servers in our domain environment and before that it's as and recommended you must deploy the active directory certificate services so you can have and trusted certificate authority available in your domain certificates can be taken from the public CS like the public certificate authorities also but that require a cost so obviously uh, for internal environment it's always used to recommend and you can you must use your internal certificate authority it's basically a technology you can say in the windows server that implements the public key infrastructure or a pki so you can easily manage your certificates related to computer accounts or user accounts or any specific objects like web server etc that maintains your integrity and authenticity of a particular object Here there is a couple of roles that uh, you have to install the certificate authority and the certificate authority web enrollment. These two are the major components. Web is used to give you a web based interface so you can access your certificate authorities administration task through web browser and certificate authority that can be used to use as a local authority service. That provides you, gives you a certificate and can be managed through a Windows API. Online responder, responder is uh, used for the validation of your certificate like your certificate revocation checks and certificate status that you have assigned to anyone over a net or over a external accessibility sometime. Network device enrollment is uh, another option which is available that used to assign certificates to routers switches and other network devices so they can directly connect to your certificate authority and take the certificates from them same as for the proxy clients and clients running windows other CAs uh, or computers you can use the certificate enrollment web services and web policy you can also define the, uh, those web enrollment services boxes or uh, objects okay when you are going to implement and CA or a certificate authority so certificate authority can be a root level that is the initial base structure one or could be as a subordinate one subordinate CAs are defined when you like to simplify the administration or you are going to distribute your hierarchical structure in the downline so in that scenario you can define a subordinate ca that will take as a secondary level and if you are building a first ca then it would be always as a root ca subordinate ca must be a part of any root ca okay at the time of uh, deployment we have seen in the last video the enterprise CA as well as inter standalone CA. There would be a two options would be there. So you can choose the standalone CA 
if you are required to work as an independent certificate authority and must not be joined with your active directory if you like to use the active directory integrated ca then that required an enterprise c option by default can be placed as a uh, if you are using an enterprise c obviously it would be a part of your active directory and always be as a trusted in your active directory and uh, in trusted root certificate containers let me show you the certificate trust information at my clients or at my server let me quickly open my server okay svr1 i'm just connecting to this quickly log in back on the server this is my member server and we have taken it you can view your trusted certificate authorities from MMC you can just open your MMC go to MMC add your certificates okay computer account or my computer local account click next so now you can expand your certificates and go to trusted root certificate authorities from here you can see the SPLCA is added as a trusted root certificate authority if we go on my domain controller where I have installed that so can quickly show you this is my certificate authority okay my SPLCA and this SPLCA is added as a certificate authority from revoke certificates you can see it from here if you issue a certificate to someone you will get the certificate list here pending request if someone is requesting for the certificate you will get the request available here fail request I would be here as well as the certificate template so we will discuss this later on quickly go back on my section so when at the time of deployment we have seen there would be two options for deployment one is the standalone and another one is enterprise CA and this is the quick difference between both auto enrollment is only supported in your enterprise CA version and the next part is the certificate template so the certificate template is something where you create and configure a standard certificate format for a specific type of clients like for the Active Directory clients, for the web servers so you can customize your certificate as per your requirement like your duration, your validity period and all these stuff you can define in your certificate and that can be uh, placed in your certificate template store so when the client is trying to request they can take a standard template to get the certificate we can also see the default available certificates let me quickly show you okay go back on my certificate and here once you click on your certificate templates you can you will get a list of available certificates okay so these are the defined predefined certificates or templates that placed by Microsoft like for the users this certificate will work for the administrators key holders domain controllers and the specific type of object you will get an a specific type of certificate template here you can create new certificate template here I will show you how can we create a certificate template or you can also create a copy of any existing certificate and then modify it according as per your requirement that will also work as a template if you modify it and place it here the last part which comes as a CRL certificate revocation list or a distribution list so whenever you are the certificate authority is issuing a certificate it has a revocation list also just to validate if this certificate is expired or not so in the public CA it's always mandatory to use that same as in the local internal CA if CRLs or CRL distribution points are not available then might be your certificate authority as your certificate would not be validated and you may get an certificate error so 
we can see it in the certificate uh, section here itself the certificate issuing revoke list is here you can put a certificate if certificate is published here is placed here then you will get all the certificate here and you can publish it from here i will show you how we can view the certificates how we can manage the certificates in detail okay new crl here that means we are going to publish a new certificate revocation list as well as we can display the existing one if existing one is available then we can add in the data in the existing ones i will show you in upcoming video how we can create a certificate how we can apply the certificate with the other accounts for the default enrollment and if you would like to simply request a certificate with the existing template how we can take it simply go on your client and you can request it from there itself let me quickly show you one of the certificate request simply you have to open the mmc at your client end add remove snap in and go to certificates my user i'm going to take a certificate for myself as a like for the sales user one go to personal store it's a default location where you have to store your personal or local certificates go to all task request new certificate click next here you can see the default template which is published is active directory enrollment one so that's why it's available this one here i have selected this and requested the certificate for this okay so here we will get an option so i am taking it as a user certificate click enrolled it's an auto enrollment functionality which is available because we have an enterprise ca if we have a standalone we can not take an auto enrollment if you would like to restrict it you can also restrict the same okay now it's finished okay you can open it spl ca certificate is issued now and if i go back on my certificate authority we can see the issuing certificate is available here same one if you'd like to revoke it you can simply go and revoke the certificate time stamp you can specify you can specify the reasons also click on yes now we can see the certificate was back in your revoke section so here the revocation list would be available and now i am going to publish the same okay new crls and now this certificate revocation list is published so this certificate would marked as expire with the specified time and this has been revoked if you like to view the certificate details at your client side or at server side you can simply click on this and from the details you can verify uh, the certificates information like serial number signature algorithm issuing authority and attributes so all these information would be available here here you can't see the uh, there would be a major component that will comes further like the SAN names in the case of certificate SAN name. So we will discuss this in more details uh, further to this when we discuss more about the certificate authority, how the web server certificates, how the SAN names will work. So this is this one is just as an introductory information about Active Directory certificate services associated. I will create a more detailed video later on so we can see there how we can work with the SAN names and the certificate distributions as well as management of certificate authorities assignment to websites or assignment to any server so that part we will take it out in my upcoming videos so guys as of now that's it about uh, for today's session it might be getting a little bit longer but yes i want to share all this information in short details i will reconnect with you all once again with a new video and that may can have uh, more details related to uh, some active directory group policies and nps and all these stuff so please do share uh, do subscribe like and share 
my channel